Hello everybody, my name is Stein and I'm from Hendrix Bouw and Ontwikkeling and together with Steven from Siebe uh, we're gonna show you our little experiment and our little experiment was uh, to tr make a 3D print scale model of this uh, Revit model um, and we're gonna show you how we did this, which problems we encountered and also um, what the result is. Um, the first step are explained by me and the second steps are of the the further steps are explained by steven um, so i'm going to show you how to make a correct stl export from revit which can be imported in cura a 3d print software which can be used by the ultimaker to print the actual model um, so first i'm gonna filter all the elements out of this model uh, which i don't want to print and i'm gonna go to Visibil visibility graphics overrides i'm gonna select all elements i'm gonna uh, select uh, unselect the visibility of all and i only select the categories i want to be visible so doors floors i want the roofs and i also want walls and windows so these categories are the ones which i want to be printed okay you can see a lot of changements but actually there are some changements in the model um, especially from the inside and I want to hide this uh, huge plane which I don't want to print uh, then I make an STL export in the binary format the unit is in meters that is okay actually the unit doesn't um, make sense a lot because I can scale the model in Cura and uh, but so I will let these units go to meters. The categories um, are uh, all selected. Uh, this doesn't matter because the STL exporter only exports what's in the actual view visible. So I already filled up the, the, the elements I don't want to print. And now I just have to click on save and I can save my file as um, uh, STL Klingelbeek, which is the name of the model experiment. Okay, so now uh, the, the STL export is done. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can find and select 3D printable elements in Archicad and uh, also how you can export it to a STL file which is suitable for 3D printing. In this case I've got this building which is uh, of a high detail level which I can't print all. So I only want to uh, print the structural frame of this building. And I want uh, different models uh, per elevation. So that's what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do first is make a selection i'm going to find and select and i want only want to see the wall type and i want to see the slab type and i said i also want only the structural element so i can add the structural function to it and let's see what's happening here i now made a selection and with my right click i can say show selection and as you can see all the structural walls and slabs are filled but this is not enough i also want to show uh, i want to export all the elevation separate so what i'm gonna do is add the home story and let's say i want to print the first floor say okay make the selection 
and say show selection. So now I only have the structural element of the first floor and this is useful for 3D printing. And now I can save my file as a SDL. I select it as SDL. First floor, save. So let's continue with Cura. Cura is the uh, software from Ultimaker which can generate a G-code that can be printed. My name is Steven from Cyber Construction and I will tell you how I used uh, Cura. Well, there are many settings that can be uh, uh, that can be selected differently in order to uh, increase your printing uh, accuracy or your printing speed. I won't go through all these settings, just show you which I use and uh, uh, how I generate the g-code that can be printed out. So let's start off with loading an object. I'm loading up an SDL. There are many different uh, objects that can be loaded. We switch to the normal uh, mode. Here are the view modes. There are different kind of view modes. I'm only using a normal uh, view mode and a layer view mode. In order to scale up your model just press the scale button and uh, increase it by the amount you want. Uh, I want a scale model of 50 meters in the x-direction. Uh, you can also rotate or mirror your uh, object. Now it will calculate the g-code that uh, the printer will uh, follow, so you, it will take a while. Um, let's continue with the basing settings. I'm using a layer height of 0.1 millimeters, a shell thickness of 0.4 millimeters and I'm enabling retraction in order to increase the print uh, end result. For the fill settings I'm using a 0.6 millimeter bottom and top thickness and a 20% fill density. Uh, in order to increase uh, the, uh, the uh, the strength of the object you should increase the fill density but in order to uh, downsize the printing time you should downsize the fill density. Uh, the printing speed is very important to set correctly. Uh, you won't, don't want to go above 8.0 cubic millimeters per second. Uh, it is shown out here that it will print 4.0 cubic um, millimeters per second. Uh, to calculate what kind of uh, material flow you have, you should uh, multiply the layer height with the nozzle diameter and eventually uh, multiply this with the printing speed. Um, I'm printing with 100 millimeters per second and this will uh, end up with a uh, material flow of 4.0 millimeters per second of cubic millimeters per second which uh, results in a proper end result of printing. Um, then you have the support type. For this kind of models it's very important to have a support type. We move on to the layer view and there you will see that the blue lines, light blue lines, are the support types. So I'm using a support type everywhere. You can also use a support type only touching the building plate but for these objects it's very important to have a uh, support type everywhere. Um, with this uh, button you can uh, uh, change your settings of the support type. Then we move on to the advanced settings. Well, the nozzle diameter is standard for the Ultimaker 2, which is 0.4 millimeters. And then uh, the, we move on to the quality. Um, well, these settings are just uh, well set off uh, if you use the basic settings. So I recommend not to change these. Um, the speed settings are. Uh, are, are, are the speed settings are important because they will tell you how much it will take uh, to print. So um, the travel speed should be a little higher than the uh, printing speed of the object because uh, the travel speed won't print out any material. So if it's print, uh, it's if it's going faster, it will influence your printing time, uh, which can be lower. Um, the bottom layer speed is important because you want to adhere your material to the building platform. So when you're using 20 millimeters per second, uh, yeah, you will get a better, better stitching to the building platform. 
Um, then you have the expert settings. Well, to open the expert settings, you go to this menu and open expert settings. There are uh, a lot of settings that are uh, not to be included in this, this tutorial, but I recommend to go through these expert settings and use them and uh, uh, experiment with these settings because they can influence your end result drast drastically. Um, so I rec recommend to use these. So then we end up with this model. Uh, I recommend to go through all the layers to see if uh, any problems occur that can be uh, influenced before printing. So, um, well, I don't see any problems at the time. You can see that these blue lines are the support types, um, the support structure, the yellow lines are the fill-up lines, and the red lines are the printing lines. And then you have the uh, dark blue lines, which are the uh, lines the printer will take just to move from one point to another without printing any material. When you are done, you press the save toolpath and it will save onto your SD card. This SD card can be, can be inserted into your Ultimaker and you're ready to go.